Hello and welcome to Wiltshire and Marlborough College for the Under-18 Schools Cup quarter-final between Marlborough College and Blundells. We're moments away from kick-off and as you can see in the background of your screen, we have a big old crowd ready to cheer Marlborough College onto the field and as they prepare their way to get up those stairs, let me bring you the teams for this afternoon. Uh, Marlborough College are led in the back row by James Cook, the open side flanker, back from a broken back, would you believe, after eight months out, his first start. Alongside him in the back row, the man who's been stepping in in his absence, Woody Wilson on the blind side and Ollie Bowman at number eight. Second rows, Arthur Braxton and Rory Staples. In the front row, Edward Betts, Humph Braxton and Edward Wrench. And in the back line, Otto Bartlett and Charlie Brook are your halfbacks. Centres, Max Robinson and Jack Ralph. And in the back three, Sebastian Hebblethwaite, Joshua Umea and Will Cook Priest. On the bench, William Hudson, Will Green, Edward Fuller, Max Dunn and Jake Hobson. Blundells, who you can already see waiting out on the field, are led by, by fly half Ben Cohen, with Ben Cornford at scrum half alongside him. In the centres, Jack Clover and Seb Windsor. And in the back three, Noah Fenton, Rocky Prowse and Lucas Yap. In the front row, Jamie Stewart, Archie Joyner and Lewis Hinchcliffe are the front three. Jonah Thomas and James Clarkson behind them. And in the back three, Reuben Northfield, Freddie Bush and Will Saltmarsh. And on the bench, Taylor Wanacott, Will Maunder and Oscar Weatherall. Your referee today is Andrew Richards, who's come all the way from the Gower in Wales to come and referee this one. It is a very, very special afternoon here at Marlborough College. The first of the four quarterfinals, RGS Newcastle and Oakham kicking off around about the same time. Then tomorrow, Harrow against Trinity. We'll be covering that one live for you as well. What a game that's set to be. And then on Friday afternoon, the fourth of the four quarterfinals, Kings Macclesfield against Fimbra. We have a big, big three days of schoolboy rugby coming up as we head rapidly towards the Christmas break, the end of the season, the last time in the shirt for so many players. Special, special moments for every single one of them. And for the upper sixth in particular, these very, very unique and special occasions indeed. Blundells, I'll tell you what, are being made to wait out there by Marlborough College, aren't they? They've been out on the field for a good five or six minutes now, and it is a freezing cold day here up at the top of this hill. Two degrees here at Marlborough College. And Blundells are being left to feel a bit of a chill, but I'll tell you what, Marlborough College are going to feel a bit of heat and a bit of warmth and a bit of love as they emerge between those two banks of fans either side of them. We're expecting today's game to be a pretty tight one. These two have had very, very similar seasons. Both have performed really exceptionally well. In the Cup, Marlborough College began with a 25-3 lead, 25-3 victory rather, against Abingdon followed by a strong victory over Camford and then an excellent victory against Seaford College as they emerge now onto the field. The drum goes up. Blundells have a little squeeze and then foreground, but it's all about for those crowds on the far side. It's about those boys in the blue and white hoops in front of us. Blundells, by the way, had a really strong start in the cup. 60 points in round one, 60 points in round two, and then a 31-14 victory over Sir Thomas Riches in the previous round to get into this quarterfinal. Both of these two teams from the southwest section, and we are just about ready to go. Blundells are on the right-hand side of your screens in those red and white hoops, and on the left-hand side of your screens in the blue and white hoops are Marlborough College. Andrew Richards blows his whistle and away we go. A high hanging start. It's well taken by Marlborough College. And we have our first action in this cup quarter final. Marlborough looking to build an exit and finding a decent clearance through Charlie Brook, the vice captain, famously landed a 62 meter kick to beat Trinity in the St. Joseph's Festival back in October. Marlborough College's first ever weekend at that festival and performed exceptionally on day one. Ran out of puff a bit on day two. But that victory over Trinity and that huge kick tells you an awful lot. 
about what this side has to offer. Blundells through Cohen, stabbed the ball over the top. There's a bit of space there, covered nicely by Marlborough, but Blundells were playing with advantage. Offside from Marlborough. And a chance here for Cohen to make a decent touch. Gets it just to out up to the 22 and an opportunity to launch the first real attack of the game for Blundells. Cohen, by the way, in that earlier live stream this season we had of Blundells game against Halebury at Allianz Park, or Stonex Stadium as it's nowadays called. Cohen was exceptional for the Devon Bay side on that evening. He could be crucial this afternoon. Freddie Bush is the man throwing into the lineouts for Blundells. Goes to the tail and it's well claimed and they go off the top to release that back line. Cohen goes short to Saltmarsh, the Exeter Chief. Cohen has another look. That's clearly a tactic from Blundells to just stick the ball in behind and he finds a bit of grass and it rolls out into touch. And the home side are going to have to play out from their own 22 here. Twice now, Cohen has looked to stab the ball in behind. And twice, he's found some decent success in doing so. Over it. Scrappy ball, but just about comes back on their side. They'll just take this one nice and easy. Scrum halves at the bottom of that ruck. Otto Bartlett. <laughs> Penalty blundles. Freddie Bush, I think, getting over the ball there. And they call for the scrum. We see it here, it wasn't Bush, it was in fact Reuben Northfield, the back row convert. Another that was absolutely outstanding in that game against Haleybury when he came off the bench in that one. Ben Corns with the head boy to put the ball in. It's a solid scrum from his side. Pass just forces Cohen to duck down for it, but they keep possession. But Marlborough College come up with the turnover this time, and over the ball, it was the skipper, James Cook. He's had a few appearances off the bench, a few minutes here and there. But this, the big return for the open side. Eight months he was out for. Played every other quarter against Bromsgrove. But here he is in a Schools Cup quarter-final, leading his team. And Mayer taking it in there. But it's turned over, Blundell's ball. There's a bit of space here on the left-hand side. Fast hands out to Zeb Windsor, former flanker. Saltmarsh feeds it out to Noah Fenton. Fenton up into the 22. Fenton's still going. Fenton's away. Fenton's going to open the try scoring. Noah Fenton. After just five minutes. Puts Blundells into the lead. It was great work. First from Windsor to stay up, and then Saltmarsh with the vision to spot there was a bit of space on the blind side. And look at this from Fenton. Wizardry in those feet. And across the line. Windsor did really well, but look at this awareness from Saltmarsh. Draws in two men with that quick ball off the base. And then it's those two big steps off the left foot from Noah Fenton. 
And the Exeter Chiefs wing it. And a 5-0 lead that could quickly become seven if Cohen lands the conversion, which he duly does. And it's a 7-0 lead for Blundell's first blood in this under-18 Schools Cup quarter-final. Goes to the away side. What a finish that was from Noah Fenton. It's a bobbling restart from Wilbur College, but it's collected by Blundells. They have a bash through the middle this time. Cohen hoists it high towards this left-hand side. Ball bounces into the hands of Windsor and out into touch. So it'll be a line out, more ball. Looks like it's Ed Betts. It's going to be launching this one in. Likes to focus on his legs in the gym, I'm told. I'll tell you what, they are some sizable legs he's got on him. Umea comes charging in. Now Morbra looks to put some width on it. Just a sense there that there might be space if they can find it as Betts goes thundering in again. Now they look wide again. Umea does well to stay on his feet. Brought down by Archie Joyner in the end. Marlborough starting to put width on this ball, aren't they? And finding a bit of success with it. Away they go through the middle. Max Robinson. Got a high five from Stormzy once, I'm told. Some claim to fame that. The mayor getting a lot of the ball now. And evading yet another tackle. Getting the offload away. Blundells do well to slow that one up. And the referee awards the penalty to the home side. Brilliant running and brilliant handling from Joshua Mayer, the London Irish man. Already causing real problems in that midfield. There was good support as well from James Cook. Line out brought down safely. And now. Marlborough will rumble on. It's in the hands of Betts at the tail. Still they rumble on. They're across the try line. Have they got the ball down? They have indeed got the ball down. Edward Betts gets himself across the line. Brilliant response to the Blundell score from the home team. And there was just no stopping that ball. They got it set early, the power came on, and there was just nothing that could be done to hold it back. Ed Betts, the beneficiary. But that is a try for the whole forward pack there. That's Charlie Brook. Standing over the conversion. Perfect angle for us to see this one. 
just pulls it to the left-hand side a little bit. So Blundell's hold on to the lead, 10 minutes in, seven points to five up. And Betts, the try scorer there. But this game is definitely game on. Cohen. Has that gone 10? No, not quite, I don't think. Referee's going to bring us back. Almost. And as we come back for a scrum on halfway, 11 minutes into the game, a chance for me to give a shout out to our kitwear suppliers. Limitless, whose logo you can see up in the top left hand side of your screen next to the score. Limitless is a sportswear armor school blazer. They're the number one sportswear brand in independent schools. Their goal is for every young person to develop an active, healthy lifestyle, and they understand that comfortable, well-fitted, high-performance kit is vital to build lifelong sporting confidence. Vital to keeping us warm on the touchlines as well. And as the bitter cold starts to sweep in, how thankful we are going to be for that. Sides, hit and hold. Competition starts when the ball is in. Everybody said, I'm just keeping strength for dominance, yeah? Throw! So the scrum. Boy! Taking a while to get going. Hold! Ball's in and at the back now, though. Just pops out the back in the end. Aubrey do well to recover possession there. Just on the shoulder from here. High, tackle High tackle on Rory Staples, the England lock. Below the shoulder, yeah. You've got to say it's some achievement to go high on Staples. He's a big man. just crept up there done well to reach bets once again to throw in will they go for the mall again as they did from close range or will they look to the back line this time it's to the back line that they'll go and once more they feed a mayor who again gets across the gain line he is a real threat today Runs 100 metres in 10.9 centres. 10.9 centres, 10.9 seconds. For those of you not in the know, that is quick. Wilbur, get the ball wide, and there's a bit of space down on this right-hand side. Blundells eventually get the cover across, but Marlborough College are into the 22. And on the front foot, they continue to go. Advantage offside. Brooke ships it wide. Still, they press on. Wide again. Oh, lovely fast hands on the left hand side. Almost up to the try line now, but it's a thundering tackle from Blundells. That was glorious handling out in the backs. Might have been Cook Priest getting his hands through the ball there. to me as though Wilf Green has come in in number 17 as well. Betts, the try scorer. And now Staples. Big counter ruck from Blundells, but Marlborough College get on the attack now. Ball is ripped clear, but still ends up in Marlborough hands. Scrambling defence this from Blundells. So much thought about having a dabble there and then wisely left it alone. Stop. The referee's going to stop things because we've had a bit of a bang. And we'll have a bit of a rest. Irresistible momentum from Marlborough College, but what tackling from Blundells. 
and we will just have a few Sorry. moments while we check on this injury. Outside three backs, we're way offside down there, yeah? And by the way, tomorrow's Harrow versus Trinity game, another 2.15 kickoff is going to be our, uh, our annual return to play game in support of our good friends at Return to Play who do so much good work in the field of injuries and uh, injury management and treatment, helping schools up and down the country. And they're going to be uh, giving us some really good insight into the things that they do. And, uh, we're only too, only too happy to support them in such a massive game tomorrow, as it is here in Wiltshire. It looks as though everyone's on their feet and ready to go. And it looks as though we'll be restarting with a penalty on the far side. Mark is on me, yeah? Mark is on me, please, then. What will Brooke do? He's going to go to the corner. And, well from the near side in the same position. They rumbled over for an Ed Betts try. What can they do from the far side? Could they take the lead for the first time? First part of the job is done safely. Ball brought down, more set up. Now the forward momentum comes. Inching. Playing with advantage now. Towards the try line they go and they across it. Referee's going to have a think about this one. He's unsighted. So no try, but we come back for the penalty. And unsurprisingly, the boys in blue are going to go for another one. Wait till I call you in. Woody Wilson brings it down, and the mall gets going early this time, and they're already rumbling forward, crabbing to the right hand side, so Betts breaks off. He's across the try line, is he? Has he got the ball down? Held up. For all money, it looked as though Ed Betts was going to be impossible to stop from there, but Blundells have somehow got a body underneath it. And I think it might be the long arms of James Clarkson in the second row. The ball was flying forward, and as it crabbed right, Betts recognised that he was a bit exposed, so broke clear and across the try line. And it is indeed, it's James Clarkson that somehow got an arm under that. And Mayer, oh, that's a great tackle on him. Stymieing, him, stymieing his momentum before it even got started. Bouncing ball just about kept under control by Marlborough College. And they do really well to retain possession there. Could have gone anyway. Braxton takes it in. Spilled forward though, so Blundells have the ball. Playing with knock-on advantage. Cornford gets a box kick away, but it's into the hands of Marlborough College. Having had a dabble, Brook now just sends this one long and up to the 22. Tells Blunders to play their way out. And in doing so, they keep the ball in field. And a chance to counter for Cook Priest. That's oh, great work from Saltmarsh to stop that momentum there. Gets rid of the boot as well at the same time. When did that start happening in the game? Oh, it's great feet, great feet from Rory Staples. Loose pass though, tidied up by Braxton. 
Oh, it's a great offload from Braxton as well. And there's a bit of space here on the right-hand side. Max Robinson, still going as Robinson, stays in field. Oh, he's done brilliantly, the inside centre. Now they look to move it. Oh, it's brilliant, brilliant defending from Blundells. Marlborough had men extra. But Blundells came up, made the big defensive read, and lived to fight another day. Great defending from Blundells. It was knocked on through the tackle, though, so it'll be a Marlborough scrum. And I think, as I try and make out my shirt numbers, I think that's William Hudson that's come on. I'll see if I can confirm that once I get a better view of his number. On the right wing, by the way, Jake Hobson has come on. Captain Wiltshire, under 18 cricket. Bit of a scrappy passage of play there. Let's so we'll have another scrum. Actually, be Ed Fuller there wearing 18. Blundell's go to the blind side. It's a bit of a dark alley they've run down, is it? But there was no release from Auburn College. They'll be kicking themselves about that one. Turnover was on. It looks as though Jake Hobson has taken a bit of a bang. He's only been on the field a couple of minutes. He looks like he's all right, though. That's a good, good touch finder from Ben Cohen. Up to the 22. In fact, bang on the 22. Freddie Bush, his older brother, played in the 2017 Champions Trophy final for Blundells. How far can he take this group towards the school's cup final? Use it then. Cohen into the 22. He's just scragged through the tackle there. Now Saltmarsh. Another good carry from the number eight. Cornford to Jonah Thomas. So Oscar Weatherall has come on for Blundells as he carries it in there. I think Weatherall may have had a rather nasty injury there. And I think we'll have a bit of a break as a result of that one. Very painful looking injury there. And immediately Marlborough College come off the field and look to get some coats on. Blundell's already huddled up 
towards the halfway line. We're 23 and a half minutes into the game. So there's about 12 minutes left to go, but at the moment, all thoughts with the injured man on the floor. I will try and confirm if that is Oscar Weatherall or not, lest his parents are watching. We hope not quite as bad as it looks, but time will tell. It's been a good 23 and a half minutes, though. Really, really even game so far. Blundells came out the traps very nicely in terms of field position in particular. Wonderful, wonderful score down the left-hand side. We can see it here again. Saltmarsh with his eyes up, creating the space for Noah Fenton. And Fenton with some absolutely delightful footwork to get himself across the line. A shout out to Zeb Windsor as well, actually. He did really well just to buy a bit of time, sort of treaded water, didn't he? And then look at this from Fenton. Bang, off the left, bang, off the left again. Nothing that anyone could do about that. And across the line, he went, the Exeter Chiefs winger. Says in my notes, he's got great feet, and we certainly saw that there. But just a couple of minutes later, Marlborough College hit back. A big, big maul from them. We've seen it a couple of times already, haven't we? That they've got some power and organization in that maul. And the loose head prop there, Ed Betts at the tail, is the man who's collecting the points as a result of that maul. A brilliant, brilliant bit of forward organisational play there. And Blundells now are coming over towards this near touchline to get a few coats on as well, I think. Suspect we may be here for a little while. So just a reminder, if this one ends up all square, which we're only two points away from that happening, the team to progress will be decided first by tries scored, second by penalty goals scored, and then third, if that's all tied up, it will be the away side to progress. So a mild advantage if you're wearing red and white. Although an argument, of course, that if you're wearing blue and white, the colours of Marlborough College, you're at home, so you have a, a mild advantage as well. The old classic way of staying warm in injury break. From under 11s right through to international rugby, no one's come up with a better way of staying warm in an injury break than this. Pop the ball through the hands. You can always tell the hard workers, they're the ones that put themselves in the middle. Lads on the outside, don't have to do too much. It's when you start getting two across that, uh, that things really start to take off. Ah, no ambition. No ambition. Terrible. Marlborough College there, just with their coats on, having a bit of a chat. see some very uh, very warm clothing they've got there if they're not having to stay on their feet because it is Arctic here in Wiltshire today. <laughs> Former school of Kate Middleton, of course. 
over college. I wonder if she's watching. Hello, Kate. More pertinently, though, in a rugby playing sense, lots and lots of recent players from Auburn College have linked up with the Bath Academy. Most recent first team graduate being Archie Griffin, the former Auburn College prop, who made his debut just a couple of weeks ago for Bath in the Premiership Cup against Exeter Chiefs. Byron Lloyd Gilmore, another of the young charges playing in the Bath Academy. Really close ties to the system at Bath, which has produced so many great young players, actually. Finally, after a dark couple of years, Bath starting to put a few results together, aren't they? And about time too, given the quality of young player that comes through their ranks. You only have to look at the schools that they have in the system near them to see that. Lights of Millfield, Sherburn, Marlborough College, Beach and Cliff, Canford, some wonderful schools in that Bath catchment area. Just listening to the ref here. I think the referee it's just an update from the referee there in conversation with the coaching staff below. Of course, the injured player comes first and the decision looks as though it's that if the player can't be moved in the next 10 minutes, we will have to move pitch in order to get this game completed without losing the light, which of course would mean, uh, sadly, our coverage would end as we can't actually move the equipment to another pitch, but of course the injured player is the most important factor here. Although the other option being debated is whether or not the game gets called right here. 23 and a half minutes in. At the moment, the injured player currently unable to be moved. So we sit and wait in the hope of some bright news, but equally in the hope that the injured man is okay. Confirmation, just uh, in case any concerned parties are watching, it, it is Oscar Weatherall that is uh, that is down injured. Not been moved yet, uh, quite rightly. Um, but we hope he will be able to be up and running faster than we fear. Referee in communication with both sets of coaching staff here. It's a tricky balance to try and work out exactly what the right option is. There is a slight option of rearranging the game for a later date as well, as light fades around us a little bit. Mm. 
A big, big week, though, of quarter-final action. This the first of four this afternoon up in the northeast. RGS Newcastle and Oakham going head-to-head. -head. Former finalists, RGS Newcastle, up against the two-time champions, Oakham. RGS, who've only been beaten by Sedba this year. And Oakham, who are undefeated. A draw with Stamford, the only blemish on their results card. Tomorrow, we've got another live stream for you. And it's the other Schools Cup quarter final. It's Harrow against Trinity. Both teams unbeaten this season. Both teams with it all to play for. Harrow this weekend confirmed as Daily Mail Trophy champions. Trinity, the reigning under 18 schools cup champions. Both teams, the top two in our next gen 15 schools rugby table. That game will define where that title goes as well. Everything on the line tomorrow afternoon at Harrow, 2.15 kickoff for that one. It's gonna be absolutely spectacular. On Friday evening, Kings Macclesfield and Fimbra, two of the stories of the season, go head to head in the final quarter final. Kings Macclesfield, like RGS Newcastle, only defeated by Sedba this season. Fimbra undefeated, new kids on the block in many ways. This time last year, few outside of Suffolk had heard of Fimbra. Everyone's heard of them now. Northampton School for Boys defeated, Ipswich defeated, St. Joseph's College defeated. Fimbra have been truly outstanding this year. Medical car has arrived on the pitch, so we hope we can see some progress. But of course, above all, thoughts with Oscar Weatherall. It looked like a very, very nasty injury indeed. Looks as though the referee wants to have a word with the two captains. You've seen, you've seen, yeah, you've seen right. the ankle. It, it, and we can't move him until the ambulance comes, yeah. and that's whenever the ambulance comes. And the critical factor light. on this pitch is light, as you know, right? So the, I've just checked with uh, the Marlborough coaches. There isn't an alternative pitch that we can get to and set up quickly. They're too small there, yeah, and, the other, and the ones up the top are in and things. Yeah. So I'm going to call the game now. And the game, because of the time, yeah. will get re will get replayed. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that that's that's the decision, right? Yeah. So here we go. And so, yeah. let, as let we hear from referee Andrew Richards, there. So everyone Unfortunately, knows, yeah? this pitch unusable because we need to wait for the ambulance to come. The ambulance won't come before the light goes. There is no other pitch that we can get dressed in time for the game to restart. So the referee. Calls time on the game there, 23 and a half minutes in, and the game has not had enough time played in order for that result to stand, so it will be replayed at a later date. My best guess is that later date will be after Christmas, but we will find out in due course. So a rather sombre end to proceedings here in Wiltshire at Marlborough College. In effect, the, school, the score 7-5 in favour of Blundells, but really the score and irrelevance. Oscar Weatherall is where all the thoughts are at the moment. We hope for the best possible outcome for him. And in the meantime, we will work to find out when this game might be replayed. A tricky, tricky ending. But do please join us tomorrow for that massive, massive game. Harrow against Trinity, 2.15 p.m. kickoff, under 18 Schools Cup quarter final. It'll be a big, big game. It's going to be good fun over there. But in the meantime, 
it's goodbye from us here at Next Gen 15 and all the best to Oscar Weatherall and his teammates. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home. School up. Whoa, well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, the great tackle! Oh, it's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15.